Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray and today I'm going to be doing a whip and chat and that's a work in progress in chat. So today I'm going to be working on my current work in progress, which is Where the Fun Never Ends by Diamond Art Club. This is a huge painting, <laughs> which is full of a lot of wonderful details and I'm super excited to get back into it. I just wanted to show you that overall picture and where we are at the moment uh, and get kind of settled here. I'm going to have a cup of coffee while we chit chat this morning. <clears throat> and yes, it is morning. <laughs> Go figure. I'm trying to get my, my body clock back in order. So I've got a couple things here. I'm just going to quickly mention them and then I'm going to point you in the direction of the links down below. Uh, this is from Painting with Diamonds. These are from my Etsy shop. This is from Muni Made. I've got a pen here I'm using. Oops. Excuse me. I, I switched it out. This is my Lace and Lathe Works pen, which I got ages ago, and Everlasting Tips on the ends. I'm using my Doris container system. And if you haven't looked at my pens, like I've got um I've got a playlist for accessories. I've got a storage container video if you're curious about why I chose these over other ones. It's all personal preference, y'all. Like, it's literally, that's all it is. I like the little clicky boxes because I like, you know, clicky sounds. I don't know. I'm weird. <laughs> so basically the way that I've got this set up on my desk is that I have taped the upper edges here and I'm letting the this part of the canvas roll into my lap uh, while I work on it. I have got these release papers from Star Or. You could also use ones from Amazon, um, you know, wherever you prefer to purchase them. But I have these ones left over from Star Or from many, many, many moons ago when I worked on my kit, my Starry Night kit, which I do have a review of if you are interested in checking it out. The reason that I'm doing this now is because when I first started this painting, I thought that I would do the whole um, going, uh, going character by character, but there's only one character here and it was really difficult for me. So, uh, my hand kept getting stuck and then it was just kind of gross. I'm not, I don't know. I like the straight lines. I like little sections. It gives me a feeling of accomplishment quicker. And so that is, that's how I'm going to, that's how I'm going to roll now. Um, there is a reason why I do it this way. I just, I seem to forget, but I'm, I'm really loving this painting. It's gorgeous as always. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's just, I mean, there's a lot of good things to say about it. It's a round diamond painting, so it's really accessible to everybody. If you feel kind of, um, intimidated by squares, which honestly squares are not difficult. Um, they're as difficult as you want to make them. Squares are, are fantastic though. And I do have, um, a video on like the differences between square and round diamond paintings and stuff like that, which I think I might redo that video soon. Um, but the problem is time. I wish, I wish I had more time to do those types of videos, but because of all the stuff that I'm kind of involved in now, I don't find that I have the same amount of time as I used to, but I will try. I will try my best. So, how have you all been? I have been better. <laughs> uh, I I got sick last week. I got sick pretty bad last week. Um, I had a pretty bad, I don't know what happened to me at first, but I got my root canal done on Monday and I thought, well, the first one wasn't so bad, so the second one, I'll, it'll be fine. And of course, uh, as soon as it was over, I kind of felt this weird like dripping and I know I don't want to get too much into it because I don't want to like, you know, you might be eating or whatever, 
but you know how it is. Like I just, I felt like I was getting ill. And so I decided to take it easy. I took a day off and then it got worse and you know, yeah. I was not talking very well. If you're in my Patreon, you might have seen the vlog that I posted yesterday. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and you could see the progression. It was horrible. Like, I, I don't know. I was just kind of a faucet for a few days and then it turned into a chest infection. So I'm just getting over that now and I think, I think I'm doing a lot better. Um, I'm still occasionally like at night taking cough medicine because it calms like the tightness in my chest, but during the day it's okay. I am taking antihistamines and thank you to everybody who made suggestions and things like that. That was really sweet of you. Um, I am taking care of myself, drinking water and all that good stuff. Um, but mostly just taking it easy and kind of resting up a bit because <coughs> it really does take a lot out of you. However, um, there are a few fun things that happen and, uh, and one kind of scary thing, which I'll talk about later. So the good thing that happened this weekend was I did the, I went to the Black Needle Society's digital retreat for Frogworts, which is like a, you know, Kind of like a Harry Potter retreat, I guess, uh, for stitching. And it was my first time. And I have to say that all the stitching events, all the challenges, um, all the pop-up challenges and everything, it was so well planned and executed. It was a really fun time. And I've been to Black Needle Society's digital retreats before, and each time it just gets better and better. Like, they know what they're doing, they know how to hold a retreat, and it's really fun. So if you haven't gotten one of their digital retreat boxes yet, um, definitely definitely check out for that when they come up available. Just watch my Instagram. I do post because I am a, uh, a rep for the company. I don't make money, but they do send me boxes. So I can help you save money on your box, but if you, yeah, it's, it's just kind of, I like what they do and they send me boxes every once in a while. Um, but I did buy the frog warts one out of my own money and also the one that's coming up at the end of this week, because, you know, I just, I've, I really wanted to be a part of it. You know, it doesn't have to be, you don't, as a, as a YouTuber, you know, you can't, you can't expect to get everything for free, right? <coughs> People aren't just going to give you stuff because you make YouTube videos. You have to work for it too. <laughs> um, but sometimes, like I was telling the group, uh, sometimes it's just nice to do something for yourself and um, and not, you know, have to work with it. You just enjoy it. So that's what I did for that retreat. And it was a blast. I had an absolute blast. Um, so, excuse me, I need some coffee. The crows are back at the chicken food. I have chickens. They're in my front yard, so I can see them from my office. And um, the magpies, I guess, have given it away that they can get into the chicken food. And so the crows are back again. And this is why we bought the special feeder, was so that we weren't feeding corvids and chickens. But, oh well, such is that. Such as that uh, homestead life, I guess. Anyway, back to Frogwarts. So um, it was a five-day digital retreat. <clears throat> Perfect for my um, sudden sickness. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> it was super fun. We we got dressed up. We took lots of photos. I think I shared I shared one on Instagram. It was really fun. Um, just getting in the spirit of things and just to be clear, like, you know, there are many of us in that group who do not support, she should, who should not be named. Um, but you know, it was just a really 
cool way to like meet other people and all of that. Um, and I did, I had a really good time. I met some fabulous people. Some of them are going to be at this week's retreat, which you will see the video tomorrow of the unboxing for that, which is the uh, night garden box. And just as a heads up, these boxes, when I show them on my channel, they're, they're already sold out. Um, unfortunately, like I, the only way I can give you a heads up is by sharing the posts on Instagram when those boxes are about to be released to the public for the purchase. But they, they do, it takes months to curate those items and to get the stitching patterns made. You know what I mean? So it's not a fast process. Um, it is, it is very much curated to that specific event and um, so it's not like going on Amazon and, and buying it you know you have to be patient um, when you see them on someone's YouTube channel it's already it's already too late technically but it does give you a good idea of whether or not you like their style and you like the idea of what they're doing so that you can sign up for something that you know you want for example, like, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the, what is it, Autumn and Stars Hollow, which is a Gilmore Girls box, is coming up. That one, I, f I believe, is sold out as well, but there are going to be ones coming up soon as well that I will be sure to tell you about in case you're interested. But most of you who are watching are probably here for cro for diamond painting. Um, and you might also cross stitch, but I won't bore you anymore. It was a really good time. It's something I did for five days. So obviously it was a huge part of my week, but, um, during that time while I was sick, I realized that, you know, like I wasn't walking Luna at that time. And, uh, so I didn't notice it right away, but I saw that she was only using two legs uh, somehow her back left leg. Okay. Hold on. Let me back up. My dog Luna is a collie. She's a miniature collie. Um, she's not Australian shepherd. She's just a, a collie. Um, she's the runt of the litter. She let's talk, let's talk about Luna's story. So when I came to Ireland in 2014, originally it was just to visit then I was supposed to move with my now husband to Spain and we were going to teach English in Spain, except it was too difficult to get in as an American because of paperwork and, you know, they prefer to have EU citizens because EU citizens can work anywhere within the EU, the European Union. Okay. So we had to, we made the last minute decision to stay in Ireland. And I realized that I was going to need a companion. I, I love dogs and cats. I love animals. And I just felt like I needed, I needed an animal in my life. I don't like being without one. And so I looked at rescue sites and I came across Luna's picture. And of course, Luna's very striking. You all know this. I'm preaching to the choir, but she's beautiful. And she is a gray or a blue merle, sorry. She's a blue merle with a gray dapple coat and bright, bright blue eyes, right? And her eyes in the picture were so sad. She was so expressive. And the story was that she belonged to a farmer in one of the you know, more Northern counties. And she was found by a young boy tied to a fence and she was being starved. And so he called his mom and he had her, you know, do something about it. And so she, she called the SPCA basically. And she was like, I want to, I want to rescue this dog. I want to take this dog off this person's property. Like they're clearly neglecting this poor dog. So the SPCA came right away 
and the they they took the dog and then I think they have to like legally they have to leave a note or something you know an official letter or whatever the farmer actually called and wanted the dog back and they were like yeah no no you're not you're not getting this dog back and he was like I'll take you to court and they were like yeah sure she has a skin disease that only comes from eating your own feces you are not getting this dog back and then he just kind of you know let it go I don't know why he wanted the dog back he was clearly you know mistreating this dog so that's why my dog is special and weird right uh, she's traumatized from birth basically she's the runt of the litter and she was malnourished and she's little um, but she's feisty and I love her to death uh, <clears throat> fast forward to two years later uh, one morning I let her outside and this is not unusual we have a walled garden and a fence and we always keep the fence locked uh or we did we did we did before the, the, it, there's this whole preface anyway we kept the fence locked and one day she must have seen something and she jumped the wall i don't know how but she did it she jumped the wall and she ran across the road and she got hit by a car. And then she tried to run back across the road and got hit by another car. This I know because I had people who stopped me later to tell me what they saw. She then comes up to the house and she um, whimpers and Luna never whimpers, okay? like. She never, ever, ever whimpers. She's very much, um, she doesn't show pain. You know what I mean? Like, she won't show it to me anyway. But anyway, she whimpers and I let her in. She she usually barks. That's what I'm trying to say. She usually barks to be let in. <clears throat> She's very, you know, demanding of her presence. Anyway, like her mother. Um, so anyhow... I let her in and immediately she runs she's holding her arm up like and she runs straight to the bathroom which isn't too unusual but when she got in the bathroom she ran and hid behind the toilet her ears were back she was so scared and I knew something was really really wrong so I called a taxi and I said, um, I, I need you to help me uh, bring her to the vet. And because I just, I couldn't drive, right? And so they drove me in. And the vet in my town is a, a livestock vet. Not, not like, I mean, he does both, but he specializes in cattle and sheep, okay? Um, this, is, this is the country we're talking about. I don't live in the city. And he takes one look at my dog and he's like, yeah, you need to go to the emergency vet uh, right away. She has a broken leg um, and it's very serious. And I guess in the shock of it all, like in the shock of it all, I got really, really hot all of a sudden. And then I passed out. I fell down and I passed out. Okay. <clears throat> sorry. So, uh, yeah. So I, I'm like, I'm sorry. I need to get some fresh air. Like I'm starting to feel a bit woozy. Uh, you're just telling me that I gotta, you know, that it's super serious. And like, cause I thought it was just a scrape or something like that, you know, like maybe, maybe I didn't see anything happen. You know what I mean? And nobody, I, I hadn't met those people who told me yet that was all well after so the shock of it just completely floored me literally I walked out of the the operation room or the you know I don't know the the little room where they investigate stuff and I got to the front desk and I fell forward and passed out and I hit the desk with my chin 
as I hit the floor. Like, I hit the desk, and then I hit the floor. And they're there, like, oh my god, like, oh my god. <clears throat> and uh, I wake up immediately, like, it wasn't, it wasn't anything, I wasn't out for a long time or anything, it was only, like, for a second, but um, my, my teeth on my, my, how do I explain this? Here's your teeth. My top teeth, or was it, yeah, my top teeth f fell over. I'm, I'm an overbite, yeah? I have an overbite. And so my teeth hit the inside of my lip there and uh, dug out like a chunk, like, you know, ugh, even thinking about it hurts. So um, I have scar tissue on the inside of my lip now. But anyway, so I, you know, it went boom and... I was bleeding from my mouth uh, and they were like, you need to get this dog to the emergency room now. And James was there and he was just like, oh my God, is everything okay? Like, ah, and um, I didn't tell him about my lip. Yeah, I just, I had just fainted and he was like, okay, let's go. Let's, let's get back to the house. And let's, let's drive up to Killarney. Killarney is an hour away and get to this vet. This is a Sunday morning. Okay. Of course it's on a Sunday morning, you know, when like they're doing emergency hours at the emergency vet where you get, you'd get charged like twice. Anyway, we get in the car. I've got Luna on my lap. She's looking at me with the most pitiful, sad eyes right now. I hope you don't, I hope you don't remember me. You, you, yeah, you don't understand English. It's fine. <clears throat> I put her on my lap and I'm just like, please, please be okay. I'm crying. I'm in pain from my bleeding lip. And um, we're driving in near silence uh, all the way up to Killarney. I'm feeling such immense mom guilt and anger at the same time because I'm like well how how did she get out and whose fault is it it's my fault no it's James's fault no it's the it's the wall's fault uh you know how could this happen blah blah blah, blah. it was bad it was bad y'all so and this was right before Christmas I think if I remember that correctly. Uh, I don't remember the exact date, actually. I think it was in October or November. Near enough to Christmas. Because what happened was we went to the vet and in the emergency vet and they confirmed that it was a very serious break. At which point they offered me tea because they could see that all of the all of the blood had rushed out of my face. I was pale as a sheet. And I was like, I already passed out once today. Please don't let me pass out again. This is just too much for me right now. And um, I can't, I can't handle it when my immediate family is in danger. Like I just can't. Anyway, um, I was expecting the worst, obviously. And they're like, okay, she's going to have to stay here for a few days. We're going to have to do, you know, monitor her, do x-rays, uh, find a proper replacement, blah, 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 blah. What ended up happening was, how do I explain this? The dog's shoulder was shattered. Okay. So there's this part of your arm as a human, uh, and imagine that all of that, that was broken into many different pieces. So they had to do a graft and they had to put in a titanium plate. And you can actually, if you ever get to meet my dog, which I don't think you will, but if you ever did, you would be able to feel the, you can feel the screws in her leg, right? Anyway, a week later, we got to bring her home. She was traumatized, you know, very much afraid of cars, 
never went back towards, you know, onto the road again um, until she had puppies. That's another story. <laughs> um, but anyway, she, she healed, but she did not heal correctly. And because of her trauma and she associated putting her foot down with pain, she stopped putting her left paw down and her elbow fused solid. So she cannot, unless it's an emergency, she can't extend her arm fully anymore. I know. I thought about going and trying to do something like, as in, um, I don't know. I can't sue anybody, but like, you know, they, all they said was, you know, make sure she, she walks and she did. She walked fine, but she never put her foot down. I've tried since I've tried uh, water therapy. I've tried all kinds of stuff and unfortunately it's not working. So I appreciate it if you try to give me um, ideas, but honestly, like it's, it's fused at this point. So that's where we are for today's story. Yeah. So my dog has a limp. If you see her in videos, don't be alarmed. It's, it's always going to be there. Uh, but her left leg, her back left leg wasn't hitting the ground on Monday and Tuesday. And I was like, what is going on with this dog? Like, is she just being dramatic or is there something stuck in her foot or what's going on? So I, you know, massaged her paw to check it and make sure that it was okay. And, you know, there was nothing in the paw and she wasn't showing any signs of pain. But that's not unusual for my dog. She let me, when she got hit by those cars, she let me touch her leg and she did not bite me. She did not snarl or growl or whimper or anything. So it's not unusual for her to not show pain to me. But I just instinctively felt like, you know, she's in pain. There's something wrong here. So I told James, I was like, yeah, I think something's wrong. I know that she's not really being communicative about it, but she, you know, she's limping really bad and I don't know what could have caused it. I haven't been around with her because I'm sick, blah, blah, blah. So we booked the, the vet and we go up there and that was on Wednesday of last week. So a week ago and, um, got to the vet and the vet was like, Oh, how's she doing? You know? And we talked about the water therapy and swimming and, and the vet was like, yeah, it's still good to really, to still go out there with her when you can, but it's probably not going to fix anything. I was like, yeah, I can kind of see that now, but she hates water. So <laughs> she's a collie. She hates water. Um, but he said that she had a torn ligament in her leg. So if you imagine your knee joint, your knee joint has two, I don't have any paper near me, but your knee joint has these two ligaments, right? And they, they cross over your um, kneecap. And so one is attached here and here and here and here. And when, if one of them or both of them tear, it's a problem. It's a big problem. Yeah. Um, so one of them has either gotten loose or has torn completely. And so basically he was like, she needs to stay off the leg, you know, don't play ball with her or anything like that. I was like, that's no problem. She doesn't play ball, but, um, just no jumping on things, no jumping on couches, no getting excited or anything like that. Just let her rest and heal and take some medicine and she'll be fine. So we have the medicine and she's taking it. She's not getting sick, thankfully. Like that was a thing. He said she could get sick from it and we'd have to do this slower, you know, over a, a longer period of time with a smaller dose. But so far, so good, thankfully. Um, and yeah, like that, <laughs> that was a bit crazy. 
Then um, I was starting to feel better on Friday and Saturday. And was it, fr was it Friday or Saturday? I think it was Saturday. Yeah. Friday, I had stayed up until 6 in the morning. Uh, well, Saturday morning. Stayed up till 6 in the morning at the retreat because it's in central time. And yeah, that's just the way it works. An online retreat set in central standard time. But uh, I then woke up around 2-ish, something like that. And found out that some of my friends from Cork were in town. And they wanted to meet up. And you can't really say no. Like, I was I was really not feeling the best. But I knew, like, you know, they've traveled all this way. And um, I at least have to go say hello. So I was there a little bit longer than I anticipated. But it was so nice catching up. Uh, it's like, ugh. You know, with all the things that have gone on this year and with, you know, yeah, yeah, everybody knows what I'm talking about. With, with everything going on, it's just been so isolating. And it really was good fun to see friendly faces that I didn't get to see last year. Um, it was it was really nice. So, and that was all outdoors. Like, don't worry, it was all all safe which I am by the way I am registered for my vaccine I'm just waiting to get it um, if you are in Ireland and you're between the ages of 18 and 34 you should be able to walk into a pharmacy and get a vaccine if they have them available but that's very rare in my area because I do live in a less populated county but um, as I'm putting this video on my channel, I am actually going to the nearest cities and I will be going into pharmacies to see if they have any, but it's unlikely. Um, it's unlikely that they will. So I may just have to wait my turn um, and just get it like the way that everybody else did. Either way, I will be getting it soon and I'm super excited about that. Um, I know that the vaccine is not like a, like, a, oh, you're never, you're not going to get COVID. Like you're still going to get COVID. You're just not going to die from it. <laughs> you're eventually one day you might get COVID, but it'll just be like a cold and not a full on, uh, thing. And with me, I, I have been prone to things like bronchitis. I used to get bronchitis every single year because of the allergies that I have and asthma and the rest. I just had a proclivity, I guess you could say, to, to bronchitis and sinusitis. And yeah, I hated it. It was so difficult because just like last week, it's hard to talk and it's hard to breathe but when I was teaching you still had to go to work and you still had to try to talk and teach and it's near impossible it really is and sick days did not exist where I worked so that was um that was really challenging um hang on sorry James is coming in with his podcast on <laughs> um so I think that, like, as someone who suffered greatly from those things before, that, like, I just don't want to take the chance of getting it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, that's, that's the story. I wasn't dying. Like, my sickness last week, I just literally had waterworks coming out my nose and... I did not have a fever or chills or um, anything like that. I just, I felt, I felt like my body wouldn't move and I wanted to be more active and do stuff. <laughs> so I'm really glad that that's over for the most part. I still seem to have some, some lingering bits of it, but 
Why is it that I can never drink like a full cup of hot coffee? I don't know. And sometimes I, I know that, um, you know, if you are a parent to small children, that you probably have forgotten what a warm cup of coffee tastes like. And I feel for you because, I mean, I can't imagine also having young children. <laughs> no, no, um, no slight to you that do. Like, I'm not anti-children. It's just, wow. Like, you know, imagine like for 10, 15 years of your life, just, well, of course you love your children. So I guess it's like a labor of love, but, um, running on their schedules and a lot of people, a lot of my friends have this really good balance where they have not lost themselves to their children, uh, and their children's schedules, which I think it must take a lot of self-discipline. Um, but I don't mean to like, obviously I'm not trying to mom shame here. Please don't take it that way. Uh, cause that's not, that's absolutely not what I mean. Um, whether you are wrapped up in your children so much that you have forgotten who you are or if you maintain those boundaries so that, you know, you can function as an adult human being, um, kudos to you because, you know, you've procreated and you're doing your best. Um, but like sometimes I think about it, I'm just like, oh my gosh, how, <laughs> what is the secret? Um, what is the secret to having a hot cup of coffee? That's where that came from. Uh, let's see what else is going on in the past week. I have been diamond painting, not as much as I thought I would because of the retreat. But like I said earlier, doing this to my diamond painting has really sped me up a lot. Um, I also really love these trays. This money made tray is, or muni made, sorry. I haven't heard it said out loud other than on YouTube. So I don't know if I'm saying it right or not. Um, but these, these trays are, are great. I really like them. I like big trays and I cannot lie, honestly. Um, I mean, 3D printed trays are awesome because of the spouts and the lids and, you know, you can get these stoppers. I have a stopper as well. I'm not using it because I, I just, I find that like taking it on and, you know, putting it in and out, in and out. Where did it go actually? Did I misplace it? It's somewhere, but anyway, oh, it's right here. Um, like I don't need to put that in and out every time. I feel like it just kind of holds me back a little bit. If you are, if you are walking away though, like if you're walking away from your project and just, you know, just in case, uh, you're not going to come back to it that day. Doing this will protect it and it will keep dust off of it, which is wonderful. I really, really like that idea. Uh, but I just, just FYI, that is not, that is why I'm not using it while I'm working. I just cover this with my hand. But everybody's got a different way and, you know, your way, if it works for you, that's the right way. There's no wrong way. I've noticed a lot of um, newer diamond painters lately, which is awesome. Um, and welcome. If this is like your first time to my channel, hi, welcome. <laughs> if it's not, hey, <laughs> what's going on? Um, I, I've seen a lot of new diamond painters, a lot of new questions, you know, or the same, well, they're, they're kind of the same questions that we had when we first started. And it's just, Great to see fresh blood, <laughs> I have to say. Um, but if you're if you're wondering, like if you have questions, I have a whole playlist of you know answering questions, tutorials, uh, that sort of thing, and I might re-energize that and do that again. Uh, this time, make it a little more cohesive. 
but that'll be like a long-term project and I have a few of those in the works at the moment so look out for that that's it's really fun it's really fun it just takes a lot of planning and planning is not my strong suit like I really need someone to be my manager. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> um, it would be it would be nice to have someone who would be like, "Hey, I see that you have all these great ideas. Uh, let's plan it. Let's schedule that out." It's hard being all the things at once, you know, but. It's okay. I'm not complaining. I just, I'm just like everybody else. <laughs> I get ideas and then I'm like, how do I execute this? But I absolutely love it. And this painting in particular, this one has been so much fun to work on because it's so colorful. And if you don't know, I'm doing this uh, diamond painting with my really good friend, Mrs. Crochet and Coffee. So you can find her at Crafting with Mrs. Crochet and Coffee here on YouTube. And she's on Instagram and everything else. Please check her out. Uh, if you haven't already, I don't know what rock you're living under if you don't know about Mrs. Crochet and Coffee. But um, she does diamond painting and she does drawing, uh, sublimation, cricket. Oh my gosh, what doesn't she do? She does adult coloring, like... All the things that I don't do. <laughs> she also does cross stitch and obviously crochet. Um, she's great at crochet. Like, I wish, Miss Coffee, I wish you would do more crochet. Like, teach us how to do a graph can because <laughs> it's like diamond painting in crochet. But I just get confused because, like, what do you do with all of the yarn, right? Do you do it like in Tarja style where you like roll it up or do you just like flip flop your skeins until you're finished? That seems like a huge headache. Anyway, um, please check her out. I'll link her below. We are doing the Fun Never Ends DP along, which it's just our way of having a fun summer um, and to do this project because we've both had it in our stash since it came out. And, um, last month was pride month and we really, I don't know. We just really needed rainbows probably for different reasons in our lives. But like, personally, I just was hitting a really rough spot and I wanted some color, which by the way, a uh, personal life update. So if you're not interested, well, I don't know why you would be watching this video. If you didn't want a personal life update, that's all these are. Um, I did switch back to my original prescription and it's, it's a little too soon for me to tell if the, if it's working, uh, but I think it is working. I think it's helping. I had been taking, I had, I had, how do I explain this? So if you're new to my channel, I am very upfront and open about the fact that I, I survive through anxiety and depression. Okay. I live with it. Um, I was unmedicated for a really, really long time. And it wasn't until I think I had been suffering with severe depression for about eight years that I finally opened up about it and said, you know what? I can't do this alone. I really need help. And I told my doctor and my doctor put me on pills. Okay. And I know that not everybody is mad about medication for depression, but I had tried everything that I knew how to do to make myself happy. And it wasn't my life. My life was very good. You know, like I really could not complain about my life, it was just my hormones. Like something was off in my brain and it was causing me to feel suicidal. And that 
is something, and I, I know I'm going to have to put a trigger warning now, and I, I apologize for that, but um, when it, you shouldn't let it get that bad. And I think the reason that I had let it get that bad was because of the stigma. Um, people are like, oh, you know, you can, even from my own husband at times, and like no offense to him or anything, but like he used to always say, uh, you you are what you think you are. You know what I mean? Like he he was of the opinion that you could just change your mindset and that you could not be sad anymore. And I was like, you clearly have never suffered from depression. This is not something that I choose to be. This is something that is in my head. It's like a voice that doesn't stop. You know what I mean? If you haven't suffered with it, then congratulations. <laughs> I'm really happy for you. Genuinely really happy that you haven't had to deal with this. People call depression the black dog because it's something that follows you. And even when you're having a good time, you can feel, you know, you're surrounded by your loved ones. Uh, everybody is laughing and smiling and so are you. But deep down inside... You cannot shake a feeling of why, like how miserable you feel. And you feel like you have to fake it or you have to mask. Uh, and once, once I got to the stage where I realized that I was masking in front of everyone, including my husband, I was like, nope, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I need help. And for me, the first step was medication. Well, fortunately, my medication uh, was changed, like the brand was changed. The dosage wasn't, but the brand and where it was made and likely uh, secondary ingredients were changed. And for once, I, once I came back from the U.S. and uh, switching from the one that I was taking in the States, because I did have to lapse over in the States, um, to these new ones that were completely different from the ones that I had before, I noticed a significant drop in everything. Now these, I'll be, I'll be completely upfront and honest with you. What these pills do is they are, they are a mood stabilizer, okay? So uh, it's to help you feel more even. I do not suffer from, as far as I know, I do not suffer from bipolar disorder. I was never like an up and down person. I didn't have big mood swings. But what I do suffer from are very low lows. Uh, and I'm just clawing my way out of one right now. And a very low low for me looks like Clutter everywhere, okay? I'm, I'm embarrassed by it. Clutter everywhere. Not being able to clean things. Uh, putting on my, I call them my blinders. You know, like horse blinders. So they, they put these little blockers on the sides of horses' uh, heads so that they can only look in a certain direction so that they don't get spooked. That's me when I'm in a really low low. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to sit on a chair and do nothing. I don't want to craft. Uh, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to talk to anybody. And it hurts a lot because I know that that's not me. That's not the person that I am. I feel like I'm about to cry. That's not who I am. And so the medication was starting to turn me into that person again. I was like, no, 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 no. This is too low. <laughs> I, I can't, um, I can't fall into the pit. Uh, so I went to my pharmacist and I told him that I was having side effects, uh, that this particular brand seemed to be causing me to slip. And he said, that's fine. Give me what you have. I'll switch it out. And then going forward, we will just go with the other brand and see if that stabilizes things or if, 
you know, if you need something else. And I was like, cool. So basically that's, that's where we are right now. All right. James just came in. We're going to go to lunch in 10 minutes and go sit out in the kind of sunny weather and it'll be nice. I'm going to allow myself to enjoy it. <sighs> yeah. I'm sorry if that was really heavy, but, um, to give you a visual, because I know that some people have not experienced this before. I'm a big Studio Ghibli fan. I love, I love Miyazaki films because of the way that the stories are told. And you can watch those movies at different times in your life and you can feel very different emotions towards characters and things like that. But there's one movie that I love in particular and it's called Howl's Moving Castle. Uh, Howl's Moving Castle has the perfect depiction of depression. Uh, when Howl is a wizard and he, he is fighting the king's army because the king wants all wizards to be under his control, to work for him. And as soon as the wizards sign the contract or whatever, they turn into these very scary monsters. And Howell, uh, the story is about him, so spoilers, but uh, he had, his heart had been taken from him uh, by a witch. And so he made a lot of decisions without his heart. And he was getting to the point where he was losing the battle against the king and he, even without his heart, was uh, slipping and uh, if he kept fighting the king, he was going to be lost forever. And he had met this girl, Sophie, and he had taken, like, well, she had technically forced her way into his home, but... She comes there not expecting anything, but she comes in and just starts helping everyone. But Howell didn't feel like he could be helped. And so he kept his distance. One, because he didn't have a heart or he didn't think he had a heart. And uh, it wasn't inside his body anyway. And so there was a stage where Howell had been out fighting uh, and... He comes in and he's, well, the first time he's dripping with this slime, right? And she, you know, it shows Sophie's dedication and that her, uh, her determination to help Howell, even though she thinks that Howell isn't a good person, right? Um, not completely a good person, but there's a good person in there, you know, that kind of, uh, we want to fix someone, women want to fix a man kind of thing, right? But it was a little bit different. She goes and she gets him washed up, but he doesn't change, you know, uh, that does not fix him. He had not hit his lowest of lows. His lowest of lows happens when he almost nearly cannot turn back into a human, He's, he goes into this cave in his room uh, that no one goes into. You know, it's his safe space. And he's covered in these prickly, feathery spines. And uh, he does not want her to be near him or see him. And I believe that, for me, that is the perfect depiction of what depression looks like in a movie, uh, an animated film that's really meant for kids, you know? Um, because when you're in that state, it's not your heart. Your heart is hardened. You don't want people to get in. You don't want the help, but you do. And so, you know, everybody's different. Everybody's experience is different, but that's what it felt like to me was that, you know, uh, I had tried all these things and I felt like I was doing all the right things and then it just snuck up on me and it 
ate away to the point where I was losing friendships. I was uh, not, not taking care of friendships, not being the best person that I, the person I want to be, you know? And that I think, like, I have been watching a lot of TikTok. And um, the thing is, is that younger people I found, I'm just a lurker. I don't make content, okay? But I found that a, young, a lot of younger people are quite... Uh, aware that they should be living the life they want to live. If you you want to if you want to be uh, if you want to dress up like a fairy every day and live your life that way and be the main character of your story, do it. It's not hurting anyone. You know what I mean? Do all the things. And that doesn't mean that you have to dress up like a fairy, okay? But you know how, like, sometimes when I think about my ideal life, it's sitting, excuse me, sitting in the garden with a cup of coffee, enjoying a hot cup of coffee, and listening to birds. And that makes me happy. And you should do those things. Those little things, just a little bit at a time. Be the main character of your story, okay? When I saw that, you know, there were a few people who, younger people in their 20s, who had taken that advice and become their own main character. Now, I know that sounds narcissistic, but like, I, I think they mean it in a gentle way. That they take care of themselves. You know, they start taking care of themselves every day instead of worrying about what other people are thinking about them or whatever it might be it made a huge significant difference in the way that they felt about themselves, the way they carried themselves, the way that people reacted to them, all of those things. And you know what? I think that's fantastic. And I would like to try to do that too. But anyway, the, all that to say that <laughs> if you're not feeling well and you're not feeling like yourself, you might want to talk to someone and figure out why. Start with your friends. And if your friends aren't helpful, reach out. There are free help helplines, hotlines, whatever you want to call them. There are places that will talk to you. You can be anonymous. Um, your story is not going to be shared anywhere. You don't have to do it on YouTube. I only did this because... <clears throat> I know that it helps some people. I know it makes some people uncomfortable, but it helps some people. And I just want to share that it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's not, it's not your fault. Being depressed is not your fault. Being sad is not your fault. It's really hard right now, you know? It's really hard to be away from people. It's hard to be socially distant from family members. It's hard to realize that, you know, uh, life isn't gonna go back to normal as quick as we thought it would. Um, all these things, you know, it's not normal. So it's okay, but it's, it, it will be okay, okay? It, it's gonna be fine. It'll just take a little bit of time. But you do have to take care of yourself in the meantime. And if that means that you need medication, so be it. If it means that you need to go talk to someone, do it. If it just means that you need to go on a drive and go see some mountains or the ocean or a beautiful lake or just stay in nature for a little while, maybe you should do that. Do something nice for somebody today without expecting anything in return. Even just a teeny tiny thing. The returns that we get from those kinds of things are, are big. Now, the medication is a temporary thing and I understand that, but this journey for me is going to take a little bit of time and I fully understand that. Um, for other people, 
it might just be a temporary, you know, uh, pandemic kind of related problem. For me, this started way, way before the pandemic. Um, but, and it, it, it's only exacerbated by all of these things. So, the, okay, I'm going to stop it there. Please find some help if you need it. If you need uh, resources, uh, Goog Google it uh, or reach out to someone, one of us. Um, you can shoot me a message over on Instagram. I'm the most active, um, but you could also shoot me a Facebook message if you need to, um, at Rachel Raycraft on both of those platforms. And yeah, anyway, I didn't really expect it to get deep today or to talk about those things, but there you go. The story about how my dog got her limp and, uh, an update on my depression and what it feels like. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you go for now. I'm going to go get my lunch and, um, do some self-care, I guess. <laughs> um, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for, for watching my videos and for keeping me company for all of your comments. I read them all. I appreciate them all. Um, it's nice to know that I'm not alone and yeah, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart. And, uh, if you need anything, just reach out. I will talk to you soon. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and I'll see you all really soon in my next video. Take care, everybody. Bye.